Hello, good evening and welcome to TC Network. I am Tingne Tim Hoki bringing you today's news. Today's top headlines include Kuki Zhou bodies of Kang Po Pi strongly condemn bomb blasts at bricks connecting Kuki areas last night. State government orders complete stoppage of all kinds of heavy vehicular traffic owing to bomb blasts at bridge in Sepermena. Kotu condemns massive attack loans by Meite armed militants at Paisang Luang Sango. News in details. First, state news. The Committee on Tribal Unity vehemently condemned yesterday's incident where a bridge at Supermena along the ASEAN Highway was blown by unknown miscreants, sabotaging the supply of essential goods for the public at this critical juncture, where the minority Kukuzo tribal community is being subjugated at the brink of complete annihilation by the majoritarian Meite community. Furthermore, the unabated aggression at Pai Ling Luang Sangol since yesterday with heavy firing from Sek Mai by the successionist Meitei militants and Arambai Tengo, with tactical and logistic support of the state police forces is a major concern for the sur survival of the Kukizo community and highly regrettable. Mention also be met that the snail pace progress on the barbaric and inhuman action on two of our Kukizo village volunteers at Pailing Mall by the Meitei terrorists is a clear indication to subjugate the majority, minority and exert political supremacy over the minority. Therefore, the apparent manner in which the current dispensation deals to belittle the quest for survival of the Kukizo have gained more significance and legitimacy. He vehemently condemns yesterday incident where unknown miscreant had blown off a bridge at Sapamaina, which is a lifeline not only to the Kukizo community, but for all the community that's living in Sada Hills, Kangpupi. What is saddened is that at this critical juncture, where the minority Kukizo tribals have been oppressed by the majoritarian community, such incidents to thwart a supply of essential items here in the area is a disservice for all communities. Therefore, the community on tribal unity vehemently opposed such incidents and along with that there's an ongoing aggression a firing at Pailang Luang Sangol since yesterday. Now we would like to appeal to the center government to take cognizance of this incident and how long do we have to suffer for you to bend down and look it into our situation. The Cookie Students Organization Sadar Hills condemned the bomb blast that rocked Sadar Hills last night resulting in destroying the concrete slab bridge that connects the Cookie areas down south from Sepermena with Kangpokpi. The Department of Information and Public City Cookie Students Organization Sadar Hills in its condemnation letter states that the KSO Sadar Hills strongly believes that such acts of terrorizing innocent Kuki people are carried out by mercenaries that are at the fin fingertip of Meitei extremist group. The release further points and cautions all individuals who enjoy free passes in and out of Kuki area that, in case Ifong complies, the right to free passes in Kuki area will be considered and the KSO Sadar Hills urges the concerned authority to deal appropriately. Further, the Cookie Students Organization Sadar Hills is deeply anguished against the Manipur Meitei majoritarian regime that legitimizes all the atrocities committed upon innocent Cookie people at the release. Mahesh Chaudhary, District Magistrate, DC Kangpokpi had issued a public notice today regarding suspension of heavy vehicle movement between Supermena and Kaubru Laikha on National Highway 2 with immediate effect. The notice states that there will be complete stoppage of all kind of heavy vehicular traffic on minor bridge in Supermena at existing CH287 
to 370 of National Highway 39, which has changed to National Highway 2 between Supermena and Kobru Laikha, with immediate effect, till further older, in order to avoid any untoward incident and to ensure safety of the general public or commuters. The notice further says that light unladed and lighter passenger vehicle may pass through under strict regulation for the movement. In view of the above, the Superintendent of Police, Kang Po Pi, shall regulate the traffic from Sapermena to Kaubru Laikha until alternate road work is completed. Subdivisional Magistrate Saitu Gampazol shall be stationed at the location for the overall coordination and action until further orders. Mention may be met that 163 loaded trucks, 6 buses and 2 oil tankers were stranded at Tikulin, Senapati District as National Highway 2 in, in Faldimapur Highway was cut off as three powerful bombs exploded in a bridge between Sapermena and Kaubruleha in Kangpopi District. Several trucks coming from Infal stranded at Sakmai. The order also entrusts NHIDCL to deput team for the restoration and alternate road work. A first wave of violence engulfed Kangpopi district on Tuesday afternoon following the heavy onslaught unleashed by armed Mayte militants and the Arambai Tengol in the Piling Luang Sangol area, situated on the fringe between Kangpopi and Infal West. The Meite militants and the Arambai Tengol, armed with deadly precision, rained down a barrage of mortar cells and bombs on the Kuki villages, engulfing them in a relentless crossfire that persists until nightfall. Although there is no official confirmation, sources indicate that at least two armed Meite militants were killed during the crossfire, with no reported casualties among the Kuki volunteers. The gunfight continued till the fi filling of this report late in the evening. Meanwhile, the Committee on Tribal Unity, or the Kotu Sadar Hills, vehemently condemned the unabated aggression of the armed Mekte militants and the Arambai Tengol on Kuki. Loon Kipgen, the medical cell coordinator of Kotu, asserted that the fresh attack on Kuki at Piling Luang Sangol villages is a blatant ploy by the Arambai Tengol and the Mekte militants to salvage their their nice image of their attorneys' image of following their interference in the recently conducted first phase Lok Sabha polls. Kipgen vividly recounted the harrowing events on April 14 at Piling Mall, marking it as one of the most egregious violations of human rights in recent memory, while adding that in the incident of two cookie volunteers fell victim to a brutal massacre and mutilation orchestrated by Meite militants and the Arambai Tengol leaving an indelible scar on the conscience of society. Kipgen pointed out that, till now authorities concerned have yet to act on the brutal murder of Piling Mall. He claimed that the lack of action from the relevant authorities empowered the Armaite militants and the Arambai Tengol, leading to another attack on the Kuki just a week after the tragic killing of Piling Mall. Enough is enough. How many more sacrifices must we make to maintain peace in the region? The central government must intervene and instruct an unfit leader like Mr. Buran Singh to cease the unprovoked attacks on the Kuki people, Kipgen asserted. Buran Singh must reckon with the damages he is wrought, but within his own community and among the Kuki people, and gracefully exit the states, he further added. The Committee on Tribal Unity vehemently denounced the assault on the Piling Luang Songol area, branding it as a brutal and unjustified act of aggression. Regarding the tragic killing of Piling Mall on April 14, NG Lun Kipgen, the media cell coordinator for KOTU, mentioned that a petition has been submitted to the relevant district authority. He also stated that if the case involving the gruesome killing of two cookie volunteers in Piling Mall is not resolved promptly, extreme measures may be considered. Committee on Tribal Unity vehemently condemns this incident, which is, I think you can hear in, in the back, background, a gunshot still going on. This unprovoked attack by the Arambai Tengol, along with the Sessionist Mite militia, this afternoon at around 12, which is still going on now, is nothing but a ploy to redeem themselves from the recently concluded 
parliamentary election which they have sabotaged. Now, it is also pertinent to mention that it was recently on the 14th before the election where two of our Kukizo volunteers were butchered and murdered by this outfit. And nothing has been taken up by the concern authority. Now we would like to appeal even to the concern authority yet again that enough is enough. How long do we have to give our life in order to settle peace in the area? And provoke attempt by such group, it's uncalled for. Now, we have even given a petition to the concerned district authorities as well. And our, ha our hands are tied. We might even take up necessary action until unless that case is also solved and we vehemently condemn this <coughs> incident, this firing at Thailand, Luang Sangu. Enough is enough, Mr. Birin. I think it's time for you to pack your bag. You have done much harm, even to your own people. Forget about the Kuki Zhou communities. It's a shame. It's a shame. The small shops and stalls built and run besides the highway in Tuibung Bizang area along Tedim Road were dismantled yesterday. The Planning Development and Settlement Department under Kuki in Pichurachanpur, KIC, had issued a notice to the general public dated 6 of April 2024, and action has been taken prior to that notice. All Kuki civil society and KNO leaders jointly operated this program where illegal public land occupiers or land encroachers in the district were investigated on the 17th of March 2024 and they further ordered the public land encroachers to vacant the illegally occupied land and dismantle the constructed settlements as well on or before 20 April 2024. However, so many public land encroachers pay no heed to the warning and in, re and in regards to that, Small establishment constructed beside the highway were dismantled yesterday as per the order given on 6 April. Mention may be made that liquor was openly sold in the illegally constructed stalls besides the national highway. This program was adopted so as to prevent traffic congestion in the already busy road. In connection to this, today Zampu Kai Dongal, Joint Secretary Planning Development and Settlement, briefed the incident and actions taken and to be taken to the media houses. He also made an announcement on behalf of the department saying public land encroachers in Tuibung Bazaar, Peace Ground, filling up canals and illegally, and illegally occupying it and illegally opening stalls and establishments beside the highway are informed that to clarify their names within this month to the KIC Planning Development and Settlement Department, failing which they will be treated like the others, he added. The District Health Society, National Health Mission, Lamka, and National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, and Cardiovascular Diseases and stroke jointly organized World Diabetes Day today at around 11 a.m. at MS Conference Hall District Hospital under the team Assist to Diabetes Care. Dr. Van Lal Kungi, CMO Lamka, Dr. Ting Lon Lei, Tang Luai, MS District Hospital, Dr. Sin, Sin Boy Vai Pei, Deputy MS District Hospital, and Dr. K. H. Sanya Manika, DFWO, and many workers in the health department attended the program. During the program, Dr. Hang Sing, Tang Lom Lal, MD, DNO, and CD, gave an awareness regarding diabetes, and also Dr. Ting Lon Lei, Tang Luai, Medical Superintendent, Dr. Sin Boy Vai Pei, Deputy Medical Superintendent, Dr. K. H. Sanya Manika, DFWO, and Dr. T. Van Lal Kungi, CMO, Lamka, also gave speeches during the program. Dr. H. Tang Lom Lal, in his speech, said that, Diabetes patient in our district is increasing since we do not care what we are eating. He advised not to eat YY which is considered a kid eatables and also consuming too much junk foods can also lead to diabetes. 
He also said that eating lots of citrus fruit, regular exercise, and avoiding oily foods can help prevent us from being a diabetes patient. He also said that having late night dinner, irregular eating patterns, overeating, consuming lots of sugary foods and drinks, and remaining an overweight can easily lead to diabetes and requested us to refrain from the mentioned foods and activities. He also added that it is wise to get diabetes checked up regularly before it gets serious since it can lead to the rise of other diseases as well. The symptom of diabetes includes urinating more often, feeling thirstier than usual, feeling tired and weak. Some people saw no symptoms at all so it is advised to get to go more diabetes checkup regularly and the diabetes patients are requested to take good care of themselves as it is a very troublesome disease. The World Health Organization had raised concerns about the spread of H5N1 bird flu which has an extraordinarily high mortality rate in humans. An outbreak that began in 2020 has led to the death of or killing of tens of millions of poultry. Most recently, the spread of the virus within several mammal species, including in domestic cattle in the U.S., has increased the risk of spillovers to humans, the WHO said. This remains, I think, an enormous concern, the UN Health Agency chief scientist Jeremy Farrer told reporters in Geneva. Cows and goats joined the list of species affected last month, a surprising development for experts because they were not thought susceptible to this type of influenza. U.S. authorities reported this month that a person in Texas was recovering from bird flu after being exposed to dairy cattle with 16 herds across six states infected apparently after exposure to wild birds. The H5N1 variant has become a global genotic animal pandemic, Farrar said. The great concern, of course, is that in affecting ducks, and chickens and then increasingly mammals that virus now evolves and develops the ability to in infect humans and then critically the ability to go from human to human he added so far there is no evidence that h5n1 is spreading between humans but in the hundreds of cases where humans have been infected through contact with animals over the past 20 years the mortality rate is extraordinarily high farrer said because humans have no natural immunity to the virus. From 2003 to 2024, 889 cases and 463 deaths caused by H5N1 have been reported worldwide from 23 countries, according to the WHO, putting the case fatality rate at 52%. The recent US case of human infection after contact with an infected mammal highlights the increased risk. When you come into the mammalian population, then you are getting closer to humans, Farrar said, warning that the virus is just looking for new novel hosts. Farrar called for increased monitoring, saying it was very important understanding how many human infections are happening, because that's where adaptation of the virus will happen. It is a tragic thing to say, but if I get infected with the H5N1 and I die, that's the end of it, he said. If I go around the community and I spread it to somebody else, then you start the cycle. He said, if what's were underway towards the development of vaccines and therapeutics for H5N1 and stress the need to ensure that regional and national health authorities around the world had the capacity to diagnose the virus. This was being done so that if H5N1 did come across to humans with human-to-human -human transmission, the world would be in a position to immediately respond, Farrell said, calling for equitable access to vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. Koki Hanglai Lompi KKL More Block distributes free medicines for the duty women at KLP and also to Pelzang Frontline volunteers. Yesterday, the 23rd of April 2024, the Kuki Hanglai Lompi KKL Moria Block visit Belzang Frontline Village volunteers where they distribute medicines to the volunteers. They also visit the duty women at key location point KLP More where they also distribute free medicines to the women as well as a, as a means of first aid. 
Since the weather is beginning to get sunny, many contagious viral diseases are arising. And to prevent the frontline village volunteers and the women folk who are on duty from getting infected by the prevailing disease, we, the KKL Moria Block, had decided to distribute medicines to them. The distributed medicines were donated together by the Cookie Zoo pharmacies in and around Moria. The KKL Moria Block extends their gratitude to all who generously contributed to sow their patriotism and support towards our village volunteers and women folk. LPG tanker drivers called off style after another round of talks with Chief Secretary Dri Drivers in Manipur lifted their cease work stride after holding another round of talks with the Chief Secretary. POL and Buck LPG tank tanker drivers yesterday, April 23. Drivers in Manipur lifted their cease work strike after holding another round of talks with the Chief Secretary, POL and Buck LPG tanker drivers yesterday, April 23. The drivers and the Chief Secretary had signed an agreement during the meeting held in the presence of representatives of transporters and retail outlets. Following the agreement, POL and Buck LPG tanker drivers have resumed their service from today. The agreement was signed by the Chief Secretary, IOCL State Level Coordinator and the representatives of Coordinating Committee. As per the agreement, stringent security measures would be placed on the national highways. There would be enough ROPs and convoys of tank trucks would be escorted by CRPF. In case of casualties or fatalities, due compensation would be given according to the existing rules and such cages would be given special treatment according to the agreement. The strike was launched after tankers were attacked by armed miscreants some days back. The Nagaland Board of School Education NBSE, has announced that it will unveil the results of the NBSE Class 10 examination on April 26, 2024. Students who appear for the board exams will have the opportunity to assess the results via the online platform. The results will be made available on the official website of the Nagaland Board of School Education. Upon release, students can navigate to the website and look at the link to download their NBSE HSLC results. The process of obtaining the mark sheets will involve logging into the result portal using the requisite login credentials, which typically include the student's roll number and date of birth. The Nagaland Class 10 Board Examination for the year 2024 were successfully conducted on February 23, 2024. Following the conclusion of the examinations, students have been eagerly anticipating the release of their results, which will serve as a significant milestone in their academic journey. A fierce hailstorm and heavy rainfall wreck havoc in Mizoram, leaving a trial of destruction in its wake. Officials reported that over 450 houses bore the brunt of nature's fury. The calamity struck with relentless force, particularly affecting districts such as Aizol, Kolasip, Champai, and Hozol. Kolasip bordering Assam emerged as the epicenter of the disaster, witnessing the devastation of at least 265 houses and affecting over 13,900 individuals, according to the Disaster Management and Rehabilitation Department. The toll on infrastructure was evident, with an Anganwadi center and several government buildings among the casualties in Kolasip district. The towns of Kolasip and Tingdol bore the brunt of the storm's fury, registering extensive damage. In Aijol district, 178 houses suffered damage, accompanied by reports of injuries. One woman from Falkland village was admitted to the Joram Medical College and hospital for treatment. Champai district to face its share of destruction, with villages like North Hobung, Karot, and Bungzon witnessing property damage. Meanwhile, in Khojol district, two churches and ten houses fell victim to the relentless force of nature. This calamity adds to the woes of Mizoram, already reeling from a similar disaster earlier this month. In that instance, more than 2,500 houses, 15 churches, 17 schools, and 11 refugee camps bore the brunt of nature's fury, resulting in loss of a woman's life. Now, national news. 
Union Home Minister Amit Sa on Tuesday launched a scathing attack on West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Benarzi for her opposition to the Citizenship Amendment Act, CAA, claiming that neither C nor the Congress can dare to touch the CAA. While addressing a rally at Karandigi in the Rasganj constituency, Sa slammed the TMC government in West Bengal over issues of corruption, including the school job scam, and asserted that only the BJP can eradicate corruption and cut money culture of the TMC in the state. Sa said the party had set a target of winning 35 lakhs of assets from West Bengal, and if it achieved the target, the goons of the TMC would be hung upside down and straightened. Hitting out at the Congress over remarks by its leaders that the CAA would be repealed if they were voted to power, Sa said, neither Congress nor Mamata Benarji can dare touch the CAA. Why is Mamata Benarji opposing CAA? She is supporting infiltration in Bengal but opposes Hindu refugees getting citizenship, the BJP leader said. The Congress and Mamata Benarji are against the CAA because they want to help the infiltrators, he alleged. Banerjee recently claimed that if the opposition bloc India comes to power, of which the TMC is a part at the national level, it will repeal the CAA by bringing in a new law in parliament. The center last month implemented the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019, notifying the rules four years after the law was passed by parliament to fast-track citizenship for undocumented non-Muslim migrants from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan who came to India before December 31, 2014. Sa said only the BJP can only end the TMC rules of corruption and cut money in West Bengal. The Kolkata High Court yesterday gave a judgment cancelling thousands of appointments met through the 2016 teacher recruitment test. It is a matter of same that jobs were sold for lakhs of rupees. They have taken 10 lakhs and 15 lakhs as bribes for jobs. It means if you do not have 15 lakh rupees, how will you get a job for your brothers and sons? He said. The Calcutta High Court on Monday ordered the cancellation of appointments of 25,753 teachers and non-teaching staff met through the state level selection test 2016 in West Bengal government sponsored and aided schools, declaring the selection process as null and void. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Benerji had termed the High Court order illegal and said her government will challenge the verdict in the Supreme Court. Sa said rupees 51 crore were recovered from the residence of TMC Minister Partha Chatterjee. What action was taken against him? Former Education Minister Partha Chatterjee was suspended from the party and removed from the state cabinet in July 2022, days after his arrest in the school job scam. This cut money culture and corruption must end in West Bengal. I want to know whether this should stop or not. The TMC can never stop it. Only the BJP can stop it, he said. While referring to TMC slogans of Ma Mati Manush, Mother, Land and People, Sa said in Sundes Kali, Ma was tortured, Mati has been given to Bangladesh infiltrators and Manush have, have been suffering due to corruption. Vote for BJP and Mamata Benerji's gundas will be hung upside down and straightened, he said earlier while addressing a roadshow in the Malda South constituency. Sa said that under the Trinamool Congress rule, infiltration is continuing unabated in the state. Referring to the recent incidents in Sandes Kali in North 24 Parganas district, where allegations of sexual abuse against TMC leaders have emerged, Sa said it is a matter of shame that Mamata Banerjee, despite being a women chief minister, tried to protect the culprits. For for years, atrocities continue right under your Mamata Banerjee's nose. To get some votes through appeasement, you are protecting the criminals of Sandes Kali. Now these culprits are in jail, he claimed. Sa said to appease TMC vote bank politics, the chief minister had maintained a stoic silence. In Sandes Kali, Mamata Didi allowed women to be tortured so that TMC vote bank is not affected. The high court intervened and today the, the accused are in jail, he said. The Union Home Minister urged the people of West Bengal to support Prime Minister Narendra Modi to stop violence, hold infiltration, ensure citizenship for refugees, and uphold the dignity of women. 
Mamata Didi does not let Modi Ji schemes reach the people in Bengal. She is afraid that if Modi Ji schemes reach the people of Bengal, they will support him, Sa said. Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO has successfully developed the lightest bulletproof jacket in the country for protection against highest threat level 6 of BIS ammunition. Recently, this bulletproof jacket was successfully tested at TBRL John Degart Ministry of Defense in a statement said this jacket is based upon new design approach where novel material along with new processes have been used. It added that the front heart armor panel HAP of this jacket defeats multiple hits. The ergonomically designed from HAP is made up of monolithic ceramic plate with polymer baking which enhance the wearability and comfort during the operation. International News North Korea carried out its first nuclear counter-attack drills to st simulate its nuclear trigger management system, guided by leader Kim Jong-un as a clear warning to its enemies, state news agency KCNA said on Tuesday. North Korea fired several short-range ballistic missiles on Monday towards the sea of its east coast, South Korea's military said. As part of testing the nationwide nuclear management system called Nuclear Trigger, its artillery forces joined the country's first such drills on Monday in a show of diversified nuclear capabilities and protests against U.S. and South Korean provocative and invasive military exercise, KCNA reported. Kim oversaw the simulation drills involving maneuvering troops in nuclear counterattack posture and firing artillery with mock nuclear warheads in case nucle nuclear crisis alerts were issued according to KCNA. Kim highly praised the readiness of the world's best tactical nuclear attack weapons, expressing satisfaction with the drills, state media said. The reclusive state in is believed to be preparing to launch another spy satellite after successfully putting a reconnect sorry after successfully putting a reconnaissance satellite in orbit in November. North Korea said last week that it had fired a strategic cruise missile to test a large warhead and a new anti-aircraft missile. An Israeli attack on Iranian territory could radically change dynamics and result in there being nothing left on of the Zionist regime, Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi was quoted as as saying on Tuesday by the official IRNA news agency. Raisi began a three-day visit to Pakistan on Monday and has vowed to boost threat between the neighboring nations to $10 billion a year. The two Muslim neighbors are seeking to mend ties after unprecedented tit for tat military strikes this year. Iran launched a barrage of missiles and drones at Israel on April 13 in what it said was retaliation for Israel's suspected deadly strike on a consular building in Damascus on April 1, but almost all were shut down. On Friday, explosions were heard over the Iranian city of Isfahan in an Israel attack on a missile defense system, but Tehran played down the incident and said it had no plans for retaliation. A New York Times report said on Monday that Israel's original retaliatory plan against Iran included a much wider counter-strike on military targets, including near Tehran. Such a broad and damaging attack would have been far harder for Iran to overlook, increasing the chances of a forceful Iranian counter-attack, the paper said. Israel has not officially acknowledged responsibility for the counter-strike, though several of its leaders have intimidated responsibility. Iran has played down the significance of the response and not directly blamed Israel, which the time state was being interpreted as Iranian reluctance to respond. The Islamic Republic of Iran will, will honorably continue to support the Palestinian resistance, Raisi added in the speech in Lahore, referring to aiding Hamas as it wages wars against Israel in Gaza. Iran and Israel's decades-long shadow war burst into the open after nearly six months of war in the Gaza Strip, where Israel launched an unprecedented offensive after thousands of Hamas-led terror terrorists stormed 
the country stock on October 7 to kill nearly 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and take over 250 hostages. Since October 7, Iran's proxies in Lebanon and Yemen have targeted Israel as well, which they said is in support of Gaza Palestinians. Gaza's Hamas rules also receive financial and logistical assistance from Iran. That is all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.